It's a new beer and it's a lovely beautiful coloured can from Quantock Brewery based down in Somerset. This is a New England IPA, but what's it going to be like? Check out the review to find out. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today we're going to be reviewing this beer and look at the can artwork. It's absolutely stunning, really bright and colourful, really sort of, you know, it really, really attractive looking and it makes you sort of jump for it when you see it on the, uh, you know, on the stores. This is by Quantock Brewery. They're based down in Somerset. It's a brewery I've not really heard of before, um, but I saw when I bought this month's haul from uh, Fuss Club, these were, you know, pretty reasonable priced and I thought, yep, yeah, let's give them a go. A new brewery, um, let's support our, uh, you know, support our breweries this is a, a new england ipa it's called infinite beginnings and it's 6.3 percent and what it has in it it's got amarillo citra and vic secret so new england ipa those sort of trio of hops are not your most common usually you get your citra and your mosaic your simcoe you know sometimes we get in lots of different ones vic secret yes we've had that fairly recently you know an australian hop Citra, yeah, I mean, you know, everything these days has got Citra in it. And Amarillo, again, we've had it before, but it's not the most commonly used one. So I'm wondering what this is like. 6.3%, just about right. As I said, this came in about, I think, again, under four quid for this. So I've bought, managed to find some pretty cheap ones. Let's look at them. It was, it was canned um, on 17th of November, and it's best before 17th of May. So it's, you know, it's still fairly fresh. Let's get this beer out of the can and into a glass, see what it's like. Because uh, New England IPA, I love New England IPAs, and I feel like, well, I, I'm, there's a long way to go to say that I'm an expert on New England IPAs, but, you know, I do I do like them, and I, and I know when I've had a good one or not. I'm trying, uh, I'm finding that with this new glass, I pour it sort of too quickly, and I've done it again with this one. So, yeah, we've got quite a quite a big head there. We've got a two, two, nearly three finger, white fluffy head. Beer in the glass, pretty yellowy, custardy. Probably not as yellowy and thick and custardy as some uh, New England IPAs, but it still still looks pretty good. Let's get some aromas. Yeah, I'm getting you know those sort of pineapple, mango. There's a bit of grapefruit in there as well. Generally, a, you know, a nice, real, refreshing, tropical sort of fruit bomb. Really, is you know, which is why I love New England IPAs. I just think they're 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 always a cracking sort of um, what I want from a craft beer. Yeah, there's a bit of lemon in there. Some of our citrus flavours. Let's get it down there, shall we? Cheers, everyone. Really tasty, really fruity, nice soft mouth feel. You get a big hit of pineapple on the front, and then you get a sort of mixture of difficult, tro different tropical fruits. It's lovely and soft, but there's a real sort of um, a twang, I suppose, of this, you know, a real citrusy sort of bite on the back end, where you're getting those lemons and limes and a bit of grapefruit. But generally, it's pretty low in terms of bitterness, and it's really got a nice, silky, smooth sort of mouthfeel. So it's, it goes down really well. Real soft, low levels of carbonation. I just want to keep drinking it. Yeah, it's a cracking beer, that. And you know, for the money, I think that's uh, is superb. So as I said, pineapple is big, grapefruit in there in the back end. What you'd expect from a New England IPA, but again, made better by that lovely soft mouthfeel and low levels of carbonation. Is there anything else in there? Am I getting a little bit of, yeah, I mean, I mean it, there is an overall sort of tropical flavor, but it's not as, there's not much, there's more sort of the pineapple and the citrus and grapefruit rather than the sort of big stone fruits of peach and apricot um maybe a little bit of mango in there and papaya but it's more of a sort of a tropical fruit sort of mix 
It's really nice. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, this is a brewery to watch out for, I think, because for a New England IPA, it's just beautifully put together. It's got just about the right level of, um, you know, in terms of the alcohol, 6.3%. So not too high, but it's got enough bite in it, enough full of body, you know, full of flavours, real juicy, fruity flavours. It's really nice. I'll tell you what, it reminds me a little bit. It does remind me a little bit of the uh, the North Breweries, uh, North Breweries um, supermarket ones. Um, both the Green Curve and um, and even maybe maybe some of their, their older ones as well. I'm trying to think of the names of it. Um, can't remember off the top. But in a supermarket now, the the two uh, the the two that you can get from. Um, uh, Tesco and and also the one from Morrison's as well by North Brewery as that reminds me of that and it almost it almost has that sort of I always feel that it's got the Kyvet yeast in it but I don't think it has got Kyvet yeast in it it says yeast um, duh, 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 duh. doesn't yeah it doesn't really say what type of yeast it is no silky mouthfeel followed by hints of citrus and pine yeah there's a slight pininess in there but they sort of it's almost more of a sort of grapefruit pininess you know opposed to a real sort of grassy earthy pininess but i'm going to drink this because this is a really nice beer so let's get some scores Okay, the scores are in for the Quantock Brewery based down in Somerset and their Infinite Beginnings. A New England IPA coming in at 6.3% in 440ml. Stunningly pretty can. Um, and first things first, aroma. So it had some nice sort of pineapple, tropical sort of aromas. Really nice. Not overly powerful, um, but just a real pleasant sort of smell. So I'm giving that 13 out of 20. Um, appearance wise yeah I mean it, it looks like a New England IPA yellowy cloudy hazy you know there, there's a nice bit of lacing of the glass there but you know the head sort of dissipating quite quickly there but it's still pretty good I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 flavor wise just for effect of what I'm another, another um, mouthful of that really nice soft mouthfeel real creamy and silky sort of uh, feel in terms of the mouthfeel but there's a lot of pineapple and then citrus uh, ending with a little bit of grapefruit doesn't give it a, any bitterness just gives it a little bit of sharpness on the back end really nicely balanced and put together beer so I'm giving it 35 for flavour I just cut my finger on the can actually as I brought the can up so that's a bit of a weird one um, value for money well as i said i paid about three and a bit quid for this which i think is pretty good because it's, it's it's still a little bit better than supermarket beers um and when you think that you know think of the three quid that for a small can of beer that's not never as good on beer 52 it makes good value for money so i'm giving it a nine out of ten for value and then overall experience well i love new england ipa so i'm a little bit biased but this is a really good example it doesn't have any sort of harshness sometimes when you get that pineapple flavor it just tastes a little can taste a little bit artificial but it's quite soft again these new england ipas are they make or break by the mouthfeel and this has got a superb mouthfeel it's up there with the likes of sort of daya and vedant in terms of this its mouthfeel i i have a feeling that a lot of these great mouthfeel beers from breweries that are based down in the West Country, you know, so Cornwall, Devon, Somerset. They, something about the water there, and even day, I mean, Cheltenham, is, you know, it's, it's only one little bit step up. That whole sort of area in the sort of southwest of England, they just seem to get their water right, so there's always a really nice softness. It's much better, I think, than some of the beers that you're getting from, from Manchester and, and uh, you know, and, and Leeds and those sort of areas doesn't quite have the softness that that those beers from the southwest have i don't know if that's just me and i'm just sort of thinking that's that's true but i think there's got to be something in it in terms of the type of water that they use so going back to my overall experience really enjoyable could drink a few of these great value for money i'm giving it 15. so try this this brewery because you don't see them now that, that much Quantock Brewery, they're one to watch for. Maybe they could be the new brewery for 2021 that we're all uh, we're looking for a new sort of one breakthrough, almost like the breakthrough artist, you know. 
I mean, the can art is lovely. I really, really like that because it's just, I just love this bright swirl of colors like a rainbow. Um, and I've got a Palau also by them in the fridge. So we'll be doing that review for that one. Tossing those scores up, we're getting a very solid 80 out of 100, uh, which is a great score because that's an Iron Maiden beer. It's the heaviest of heavy metal. And you know, I want you to know that when it comes to beer reviews, I do, you know, I bleed for, for you guys to make sure that I bring you them. Just for example, this is the damage that the can's done to my finger. So um, hopefully that's not gonna ruin the flavor of the beer. Um, and hopefully my finger won't drop off from all the blood that I'm losing. Um, so I'm gonna fill that up in a sort of strange internal way by drinking the rest of the beer. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And until the next one, keep on rocking.